hi friends in this video i'm going to discuss about variable area flow meter which is also known as rotameter and these rotameters are commonly used in an applications which require local indication because most of the rotameters are made up of transparent tapered glass tube inside which a float moves and the position of the float is a direct measure of this uh, flow rate and this position is clearly visible from outside uh, the rotameter and in applications where the transparent glass tube cannot be used because uh, uh, the pressure uh, Mm, operating pressure may be high or uh, where the moving fluid may not be compatible to the glass in that cases metal tube rotameters are used in metal tube rotameter the position of the float is not visible to the outside uh, operator in that case the position the movement of the uh, float is uh, transferred mm, to an uh, indication by using a magnetic and mechanical arrangement Variable area flow meters are often used in applications that require adjustment to flow rate because uh, most of the rotameters uh, comes with the needle wall. So along with the flow uh, indication, it also gives provision for controlling the flow rate. And the advantage of the rotameters are low cost, accurate, reliable, and also simple in construction. And they are not used for applications like uh, the medium which coats uh, inside the tube and also the medium which having a particulate because this uh, medium will obstruct the movement of uh, the float and it will give a wrong values. The variable area flow meter is also a head type flow sensor. Here you see this uh, orifice is also one of the head type uh, flow sensor. But here the restriction is fixed and the increase in the flow rate will cause an increase in the pressure drop. And this pressure drop is measured by using a differential pressure transmitter which uh, gives the flow rate measurement. But here in rotameter, so with the increase of the flow rate, so the area is changing and the pressure drop across this float is always remains constant. Only the area is changing and, and the position of the float is, indi is uh, indication of uh, the flow. This is Archimedes principle. So which states that when a solid body is immersed in a fluid, it displays an equal volume of that uh, fluid. So the volume of the fluid that is displaced is proportional to the volume of the solid body that is immersed in that fluid. And this displacement of the fluid generates an upward force on the object that is called a buoyancy force. Here you can see this example is a ship. Whenever the ship is um, floating on the water, so there is an upward uh, uh, force that is acting, that is buoyancy force, that is equal to the amount of the water that is displaced by the ship. Here you can see the buoyancy force is acting upwards and the weight of that ship is acting downward. So at a particular position of this float, so means it is in at equilibrium in that case both the upward forces are equal to the downward forces so here you can see upward forces are two forces one is drag force another is buoyancy force and the downward force is the gravity force and this buoyancy force and gravity force are constant and what is the variable parameter here is the drag force which is proportional to the velocity of the flowing fluid so in the coming uh, slides we will see the relation so here you can see so at this position so this is the uh, float and uh, the area between this float and uh, this tapered glass tube so at this equilibrium position that is at one this at one position so both upward forces or downward forces are equal and this is uh, causing the equilibrium condition but whenever an increase in flow rate so we will disturb this uh, equilibrium condition and here you can see increase of the flow rate will increases the drag force and this drag force uh, increase in drag force will move the float upwards because um, upward forces are dominated in this condition and it goes and settles to a position where all the upward forces or downward forces are again comes to equilibrium so at equilibrium here we can see that uh, buoyancy force and drag force equal to the gravitational force that is weight of the float here this is the equation so weight of the float equal to the mass into uh, acceleration due to gravity and the mass is given by the volume into density so vf is the volume of the float and the density of the float and the buoyancy of the um, buoyancy force that is acting upward is given by again uh, mass into acceleration due to gravity and here the mass is uh, given by volume of the float into density of the fluid that is displaced by this float and the drag force here you can see cd is the drag coefficient which is a constant and af is the area of the float and uh, density of the flowing fluid and vf is the velocity of the uh, uh, flowing uh, fluid divided by 2 and if you submit in this uh, equations 
so finally we will get vf that is the velocity of the flowing fluid which is given by square root of 2 vf into g into density of the float minus density of the flowing fluid divided by cd that is drag coefficient into af that is area of the float into uh, density of the moving fluid and volumetric flow rate if you see so it is given by the area that is tapered area so at each position it will vary into the velocity of the flowing fluid so this is the equation for volumetric flow rate of the rotometer and this is the drag coefficient uh, so here you can see from the graph for a uh, smooth uh, sphere so that is a ball so this is the float so for various Reynolds numbers you can see so generally the rotometer is not uh, preferable for uh, laminar flows because here you can see the CD is not a constant changing with the Reynolds number and above 1000 so the CD is constant so and generally the rotometers are used for uh, flow rate that is uh, Ren with Reynolds number greater than 1000 because the CD is almost constant from here you can see and these are the different floats one is ball floats which is commonly used in addition to that uh, uh, tail guide floats are used and also other is float for low pressure drop so in applications where the, the drop high pressure drop is not acceptable then uh, these low pressure drop floats are used and also float with uh, guides so are used in applications so in uh, metal tube rotometer this float with uh, guides are used so here i'll discuss that metal tube rotometers are used in applications where this glass transparent glass cannot be used like high pressure applications or the material moving fluid may not be compatible to the glass in that cases this metal tube rotometer are used here this float is uh, moving in a guided pin and this uh, to this float there is a magnet that is attached so and the movement of this float will cause uh, this needle to uh, change and it, it indicates a direct uh, uh, indication of the flow rate to it will use the indication to the external operator and at the same time there are transmitters are available so in addition to local indication it also transmits the data that is flow data to the uh, plc or dcs so in the form of the 4 to 20 milliamperes and the calibration of the variable flow uh, meters for uh, fluids gets strong when there is a change of any density of the medium because if you are calibrated for uh, liquid that is water or air and if used to some other mediums then there is a um, error and it need to be corrected with correction factors so if the change in density it also affects this uh, flow value and working pressure and working temperature so especially working pressure and working temperature is important for gases so the indicated volumetric flow rate needs to be corrected by a multiplication factor so whenever any change of these uh, three so it need to be corrected by a multiplication factor so first i am seeing for uh, i will discuss for gases so here you can see this is the volumetric flow rate so is uh, proportional to this uh, uh, densities and for gases if you see so because this density of the fluid the gas density is very less compared to the density of the float then this uh, you know numerator uh, can be uh, omitted so q is directly proportional to square root of 1 by uh, density of the flowing fluid and for density correction so this is the uh, equation qt equal to q1 uh, into square root of rho 1 by rho 2 density is these are the two densities and if you want to correct for uh, pressure and temperature uh, variations so we need to put uh, this equation here you can see according to kinetic gas theory pressure of this gas is proportional to number of gas molecules into density into temperature so density is proportional to p by t if you submit here so we are getting this equation so this is the new flow rate so with variable uh, pressures and temperatures and this is the example so for uh, gases i will discuss a variable area flow meter that have been calibrated for air at a pressure of 1 bar and temperature of 20 degrees it is now used for at a pressure of 4 bar and an operating temperature of 30 degrees the degree centigrade so if you convert to kelvin so it is 303 uh, degree kelvin at a certain vertical position of the float the relevant indicated volume flow rate is uh, 10 meter cube per hour at standard working condition so the float uh, that is uh, uh, indicating the flow is 10 meter cube per hour so at this 20 degree centigrade and one bar so we need to calculate uh, the actual flow rate at 4 bar and 30 degree centigrade so here you can see q2 is the new flow rate so q1 into square root of p1 by t1 square root of t2 by p2 
and this is the actual uh, flow rate so and if you submit here so this is the actual flow rate and there is a correction factor 0 0.509 so actual uh, flow rate that is new flow rate is 5.09 meter cube per hour so even though the float is uh, giving 10 meter cube per hour value so but actual flow rate is 5.09 meter cube per hour and this is the other uh, example so here in this case in addition to pressure and uh, temperature so the density is also varied here you can see so uh, the standard operating condition is 1 bar and 20 degree centigrade and the uh, rotometer is now being used for 4 bar and 30 degree centigrade and it is calibrated for air and uh, medium that is used is uh, having a density of 0.25 so compared to the air density of 1 so and it is showing that is rotometer is showing 10 meter cube per hour so at this new condition that is that is at uh, standard working condition the actual flow rate is here we can calculate so and here the correction factor now it is becoming 1.017 and the actual flow rate is 10.17 meter cube per hour so these are the correction factors which need to be uh, taken into consideration when uh, temperature pressure or density is changing for gases when using a rotometer for measuring the flow rate and when we are using uh, different uh, medium that is for liquids so here you can see so from this equation here the density of the liquid is uh, not less compared to the density of the flow uh, that is float so we are not emitting the numerator so here you can see for liquids q is proportional to square root of rho f minus rho fl by rho fl where rho fl is the fluid that is the liquid and uh, density of the, this is the density of the float and if you solve this so new flow rate equal to q1 into this uh, value into this value so whenever the liquid so other than the calibrated liquid we are using so that need to be uh, corrected by using this equation thank you for watching my video